Welcome back game developers. Today we're going to be creating an item uh, an item interaction system for your game um, whether it's a little cube like this an example cube um, or a realistic door or whatever item you want to create you can um, interact with it with your first person character or third person character whatever it may be. Um, so yeah let's get straight into it. Um, there should be a short tutorial by the way. So let's go to our first person um, folder into our blueprints and let's Right click on a free space and go to blueprint and then blueprint interface. Um, let's click on that and let's call it interact um, interface. And let's save and then open this up with this new function or right here, we can press F2 um, or just right click and rename. And let's call it interact and then compile and save. And then let's add an input in an output. So for output, let's uh, keep it as a Boolean and we want to do did interact question mark because we want to know if they interacted with the item our input will be of type character so let's go character object reference and we can just say interactor for this great so we can compile and save and this is actually all we need from this interact interface because we're going to be rewriting um those events so now we can compile or, an, or uh, just save again and let's go to create our HUD first. So when you're going as a first person, um, there's going to be a little cursor probably in the middle of your screen. And that's how you'll know when you're actually hovering over an item uh, with your crosshair and when you can interact with it. So let's go to our widget. Let's go to our HUD widget and let's actually create that now. So if we look for an image, we can create that, put that on the canvas panel and let's just call it um, IMG underscore crosshair. And um, this is a pretty good method to do it because if you have a crosshair um, that you want to be able to change, like if you're using a gun or something, you can change it pretty pretty easily with this image right here under brush um, and just make it so it changes uh, whenever you're yielding a different weapon. But anyways, let's change the size of it because crosshairs don't look like this. Let's maybe change it to like three and three. Um, yeah, so it's a small little dot and it'll be right where you want it to be in the middle of the screen. So we can compile and save. Um, and then we can close the HUD. Um, and then let's go into our first person blueprint into our uh, character. So this is what we have so far for our item um, interaction. Um, if you didn't watch the last tutorial, I'll go over it now. So what you need to do um, to begin with is you want to go off of your started and you want to create an um, item um, or an input action and you want it to be of type inter or uh, you want it to be called IA underscore interact or whatever you really want to call it but upon started you want to create a line trace by channel um, this is to basically make like a vertical or a horizontal line in front of the camera um, to figure out what you're actually um, interacting with when you interact with it when you press the button so we have to create a line to do that. So let's create a start line. And that start line is going from your first person camera or the camera of whatever character you're using. But in this case, it's the first person camera. It will then go to the get world location. That immediately will be the start location. Um, and then we're going to get the end location. In order to do that, we want to get the forward vector. Um, so directly, remember, horizontal of the camera, we want to get the forward vector and get basically a random or not a random, but whatever scalar X value that you want to assign to it. So, for example, I said 250. So we multiply this vector by 250 to make it very far away um, and make it so you can interact with things that are moderately far away. Um, then you will um, add that to the location where you're starting, just so it goes off of that location to begin with. And that's your end vector. After this, we're going to want to get that out hit and we want to break the hit result in order to get the hit actor. Um, so if you're hitting something, that's what this Boolean is here for. If you're hitting something, then we want to do an action. This is basically item interaction that only works for the door. So we're going to override this and make it so it works for all items. So let's get rid of it and compile and save and get started with the new logic. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually um, move this out a little bit. So let's just move it out a little bit. And then we want to go off of this hit actor that we were using earlier and do two different things. So firstly, let's promote this to a variable. We want to have a hit actor variable. So let's do this and I actually have one already. So what I could do is um, I'll delete the first one. I'll just delete that. And that's from me doing it um, earlier on um, this video earlier and I had to double take it. But OK, so let's compile. So that is the hit actor variable now. And now what we want to do is we want to go off of this and create a Boolean. So we'll have an if statement 
or you can also just hold B and left click. And let's go off of this and let's actually check a couple of things. So we want to see firstly, if we're actually going off of um, if it actually returns a value, if it actually hits. So let's go and and bool off of this. So that's the first condition. Um, let's reroute. This is the first condition. The second condition is going to go off of the hit actor and we want to see if it implements um, well, it does implement the interface that we created earlier, which is interact interface. Compile and save. We can go off of this to the return value. Those are the two different um, and conditions that we want to check. And if those are both true, then we'll fire off our new um, interact event that we created inside of our um, interface. So let's go off of true and let's call interact and it should say message right next to it. That's how you know it's the right one. It's going to say target is interact interface. You'll know, you'll know it's the one because it has a little envelope in the top, right? So now off of target, we want to make it self and then off of interactor, we want it to be, um, get player character. Great. So now we can set it up and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, and now we, what we really want to do is, oops, excuse us. What we really want to do is we want to have a variable that checks and see if it's interacting so we can um, reference that in all of our items. So let's go did interact and let's promote this to a variable. Um, and instead of it being did interact, let's call it uh, is interacting, question mark, right? And let's disconnect this and let's compile and save and let's actually check this to be true because if we're doing this and that means we are interacting and then let's actually give it a little bit of time in between and then we're going to set it to not be true um so let's set it to one second in between and then let's do it again and then set it to be not true it's not interacting any longer um same logic applies for if this is false if this is false then we are not interacting and that is all the logic that you really need here this is one way to do it. There's obviously multiple ways to do it. Uh, like for example, you can have it. So like if you're in this radius of the specific ring, then you can um, interact with an item or if, um, I don't know, maybe you walk over it like in Warzone or like other first person shooter games, but this is one way to do it specifically for like horror games like Resident Evil, you usually would have to look at the item before you can interact with it. But okay, so now we have this logic and to make sure that it's working with the um, line trace, let's do for duration like I have right here and trace complex. So now if we go in and if we play from here, you can see that there's a trace that like so. All right, so now we know that this is working. Let's go into our, um, our actual door. So let's click on this door, go to edit blueprint, and let's start actually using the logic that we set up. So let's go to class settings and let's implement the interface. So let's look for interact interface. And now the interact interface will be here. We'll compile, we'll save. Um, and all right, so now let's start creating the logic for how this is going to work. So um, if you've seen previously in the beginning of the video, there was some logic right here that actually used, uh, that was used for the door. So let's go to the door and let's start changing how that logic is going to be set up. So this is, let me move this over. Let's move this over all the way over here. So let's firstly go to make an if condition. And based on the way that ours is set up, we have to do it a specific way. So let's, since we already have a character reference um, from the last tutorial, if not, you can just follow this right here, create a character reference. Let's go off of that character reference and let's go is interacting, which is the Boolean variable that we got earlier. We want to get that value um, right here, this value right here. We want to get that value and we want to make that go to an and bool to check two different conditions. This will go to here, by the way. And we want to check also off of the character reference. We want to get the hit actor um, to see if we're actually hitting this actor and not a different one. So let's make an equal sign and make sure it is self. Um, if it's hitting uh, self, that would mean that it's hitting the actor that we're in currently. So we can go and put that to the and. Um, let's drag these out like so, and then move them over. Actually, we can just delete them because we're gonna replace them anyways. So let's move this down here, set this up. Oops, I guess that doesn't really make it look that much better. Great, so now we have that set up. So let's go off of this branch and let's go and have another branch. And this will be um, following on the logic that we had with our door. So we want to see is interacting. We want to get is interacting and if um, this is false, which it will be uh, upon first like 
couple of ticks, we wanted to already run the is interacting with door function. Um, and this function will have the target as self because it will be the door, but this will be the um, character reference. So let's just get character reference, got it right here. And then on true, we're going to actually use the interaction that we want to happen, which is handle door. So now if we compile and save, this is to fix the logic for our door so that now it works with all items. So let's go in here um, and play from here. And if we go here and press E, which is my interaction, you can see it works. Um, we can go right through, we can close it as well. Um, and it works perfectly. Now this is for the door. So if you want to set it up for something like this as well, that would be very easy. Let's go back in and go to this item, go to edit blueprint, and let's basically do the exact same thing, but just a little bit different. So since we don't have an event begin play, um, let's go to our event begin play. So let's begin play and let's go off of this and basically just go to, um, cast to BP underscore first person character. We want to get the first person character, uh, get player character, I'm sorry. And we want to uh, make that a variable. It seems to already have this here. So we can just do this like that. Um, but for your case, you can just right click and promote to variable. Um, it's, it'll be the same exact thing. I just happen to already have it right here. So now let's go like so, clean it up a little bit and let's get the event tick and basically do the exact same thing. So I'll show you another way that you can set it up so that it'll be a little bit more modular for you. So you can do the exact same thing we did last time. So you just create a branch off of this branch. We want to do the exact same condition. So we'll go right here, copy this condition and paste that condition. And this will be the same condition for every single one. Since this is white, what that means is, is that it doesn't have a variable called character ref here. It is called BP player ref. So what you can do is you can, um, you can hold control click on it, hold control and hover over it to change node to that node. And it will replace that node um, just to make it a little bit faster for you guys. Um, and what we can do is we can make it so we fire off a certain event every single time. So let's make a custom event. Let's just call it interacted. Let's make it right up here. And we can just do something simple like print string. If I could type. And let's just make it say something as simple as like, interacted and then after a second or two or even half a second we can make it go straight to deleting the actor so we can uh make sure that it definitely works so let's destroy actor we can compile and save and then make sure that off of this true we go to interact message or not interact message sorry do not get confused with that because that easy that is easy to get confused with. We wanted to use this custom event that we got right here. So it's going to be interacted. Great. So now if we compile and save, and if we go back in and play from here, if we go right into this, we can press E. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely forgot the very uh, first step that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go to class settings and go to implement interact interface so it's uh oh same same ordeal because i made this video earlier i had to uh remake it but because there was like some glitch with the screen but i'm gonna have to delete that you guys won't have this issue once you go to class settings and you add interact interface you will now be able to do this once you go into your first person um map and you press e it'll say interacted and then boom it's gone because it's interacted so yeah, if you guys want, you can turn off the visible for duration. So it looks more like um, a game and you're not in debugging mode. So yeah, so now it works for any item you want to have it on. It will work for the door. Um, it'll work for this little cube. It'll work for whatever you guys want. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. Um, I hope it was informative and you learned something new. And let me know if you guys have any more tutorial ideas you want um, in the future. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.